feel so freaky. I feel so freaky. There's something about the way you look at me. It's got me imagining and seeing things in my domain i'm about to blow up in here like a hurricane and i can't take it no more and you can't take it no more there's so many things yes sir yes sir yes sir i'm there i'm there Oh, we'll be banging, banging, and banging, and banging the head and forth. Alexa, pause. Yes, sir, I am there. Yes, sir, I am there. It's hump day. I am there. What's <laughs> going on, Mac? How you doing? I'm all right. I thought you were talking to someone in your background. You could no, be looking around. <laughs> I had to get there. I had to get there on this hump day. You already know how we do it. Yeah, I got to get my feeling going. It's been a, a day. Mm -hmm. Full of ups and downs, you know, round and rounds, but we here. Yes, sir. Candace, what you know about that? What you know about that, <laughs> Candace? You can't take it no more. I have to get myself in this place. Welcome to another edition of Real Talk for Real Men. Um, I'm going to hopefully wait on some guests because tonight's subject is a very, very exciting one for me. Um, so it's going to give us an opportunity, hopefully, to have some males on here. What's going on, Miss Candy from the Candy Shop? How you doing, baby girl? By R. Kelly, and I love What you it. know about that? What you know about that? You too young to know about that. You don't know nothing about that. Yes. Well, hi, Tasha. Hi, Sherry. Hi, What's going on, sis? Brother. Welcome, everybody. Uh, like I said, to another edition. I am expecting some males to come on, so uh, we're going to you kind of converse a little bit. Uh, of course, we know we're going to be talking about a subject that I want you ladies to really zero in on today. It's, it's called women. What do you bring to the table? Women, what do you bring to the table? And I want to wait for my men to come on because I want them to be well represented um, for sure uh, before I even get to talking about it. So I'm only listing the title for right now before we get into it because I anticipate a really, really uh, informative show just so you know. Um, mm -hmm. I've done my research. Um, my God, whenever you kind of bring up a subject like that, uh, as I was looking, so many things came to the forefront that it was more than I could use. So I had to pick and choose of, of how I wanted to go, the direction I want to go, this thing to go in. Uh, so we're going to wait. Uh, I do believe we're going to have some male guests. Um, if not, you know, I'm always prepared to talk about it straight out forward and, and get the female perspective. But I did, in fact, invite some males. I hope uh, Kennard is coming on. Okay. He is. He's making his drink. That's what's up. That's what's <laughs> up. I invite everybody to kind of make you a nice drink, settle in. I hope uh, uh, the show is informative. You know, um, you know, every time I do topics like these, you know, it has the potential to be incendiary. And that's not what we do. You know, not here on Real Talk. You know, I actually try to bring, you know, something to the table to where you can walk away from and say, wow, I learned something or I appreciated something in a different perspective. So no different than than we've been doing. Just going to do the same thing tonight. Um, so but I just think um, we've kind of built the, 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 the platform up enough that we have had enough men that I wanted to do something where you ladies can have an opportunity to hear what a, a lot of guys think. You know, I know Can uh, Candace on your show, The Candy Shop. You 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 carve out a niche every two weeks for that, you know. Yes, um, and it's about time. And I'm wondering if you can come on again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna definitely let me know the topics. We're gonna talk about that. But I love the fact that you make time for it on your show. Um, I haven't always had the honestly, you know, the men to be able to do it. But over the last, I would say, a couple of months, you know, I've had guys that have been coming on. Um, so hopefully we can kind of get them together. If you would, Candace, while we're waiting, reach out to some of your your male viewers and please, I'd love to have them come on camera. Um, you know this platform can hold ten people. Um, Let me see if I can get my cousin Kenny. Yeah, on yeah please tell Kenny to come on board. I'd love to hear him. Sherry, Tasha, the same thing. If you got anybody, please invite them. We're gonna give them about another five minutes, and then if not, we're gonna get into it. So you know. Um, 
you know, as, as always, we on CP time. So when you tell black folks, you know, eight o'clock, they think eight thirty. You know, but <laughs> but I try to be prompt, you know, to to be here. Uh, but I do want to have the men involved in this um, because it's I think it's important. I think it's believe it or not, I think this is an important topic to have at an at an, at an important time to have it. So we're going to give them out another five minutes at eight ten. Whether who, whoever's here or not, we're going to go forward. We're going to move forward. We're going to do what we do here on, on Real Talk. So checking in, Tasha, you know, how you doing today? Uh, my week is all off. I've been thinking all day. Today was Thursday. So I'm, catch up with me later. <laughs> okay. Uh, my week is all the way off. I forgot to say it was Wednesday. I'm thinking tomorrow's Friday. So okay. I'm all the way disappointed. I got you. I got you. <laughs> and sis, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. I like the hair. I really like the hair. I don't. I hate when I have my hair down. I, li I like it down. You should wear your hair down more. No, I hate it. I, that's you why know. I pick it up. So yeah, well, I, I love it. I, I actually do. Your glasses now. You look like you 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 on your grown woman tonight. So I like it. I like it. I'm trying to tell you. When the nephew done got up there, so before they come on, he coming. He got it. He get, he got his seat. He got his string. What's no, going on, I baby D? I said huh? before Megan. he come on. Before he come on, I, nephew come on. I don't want him to hear this, but the ladies can hear it. I'm just telling y'all from the rip. I'm bringing wop to the table. But okay, not right now. I'm just okay. Okay, we, we will expect you all. I think we all are. There you go. There you go. What's going on, what Lady up? D? How are you doing? What's up, Jay? I'm good. What's happening, baby boy? Can you hear me? I'm I can, I can light. hear you, partner. I can hear you. Uh, although you need to get that whack ass Dallas out of the background, I will say I that. Know, hey, man, don't hate on them cowboys. That's for life. Hold on, let me show you. Some they love. You know, so that that he, and he got the nerve yeah. to have a star calling this man cave after a losing team, ain't that some shit? The but okay. audacity, the nerve. Uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the, uh, it, Stephen A. Smith will say it's unmitigated golf. <laughs> feed me, baby, feed me. All right, I feel you. I feel you. You better keep it in the frame because it'll be a damn long time for y'all win again. I'll tell you that. Well, I tell you, hey, you got two good minutes and you coming for me already. What's up, uh, yeah. what's up, ladies? <laughs> What's up, D? Hey, Tasha? Hey, what's up? Auntie, y'all hey, can't talk about Auntie. What's up, Yes, Andy? yes, yes. Uh, Jay, did you Derrick invite Derek? I'm not fighting with you tonight. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you, it's you got early. that drink? I got my drink. Tasha, where your drink at? Well, I got some water for right now. Oh, man. <laughs> We're going to give everybody two more minutes, uh, and we're going to get this party cracking. Uh, Jay, did you invite uh, Derek, man? Yes, Derek is. Um, he's on his way home. He, you know, he work, okay. he's working security downtown. You know, for okay. the Capitol. Okay. Okay. And uh, okay. He's, on, he's on his way home now. Okay. Well, I know Terry plans on on popping in. I know Canard's going to pop in. Mm -hmm. Candace and my, yeah, my cousin Kenny. If we're still on, he said he'll join. He's about to do a show on my friend's channel. Gotcha. Um, in about twenty minutes. So after they're okay. done, he, he may pop on around nine. Okay. All right, so we got two more minutes, and then we'll kind of get this thing cracking. And so uh, until then, it, uh, Jay and I might have to represent the male contingents, contingency on this thing, which is okay. You know, I'm always prepared to, to speak got out, it. speak up, and do what we do. Got yeah, this. you know. So, you got know, how's your week going so far, D? It's been good. Yeah, okay. it's been good. It's okay. my last weekend in Asheville, and I'm really excited about oh, that. Wow. Don't okay. ever go to the hospital if you can avoid it. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, mm. good advice. Just a little bit of information. <laughs> good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. that. Okay. Candace, Candace, how's your week going so far? Um, It's been busy at work. You know, education, this was the first week, uh, well, our start week, basically. Right. So it's been busy with these Absolutely. Students and employees managing them. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right. Well, we're bringing on Kennard. Uh, welcome, Kennard, to the show. Hi, Kennard. You know? Hey, what's going on, y'all? All right. All right. So, what's up, brother? Kennard, do you smile? You be looking serious. Yeah, he did. He's a fraud. Once Kennard get a couple of drinks in him, he then he'll be able to hear smile. You heard what I said, Kennard? What? Oh, no, I didn't hear you. What's up? I said, do you smile? You was looking serious? Oh, you just caught me off guard. I'm not a serious oh, okay. smiling now. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go ahead on and get started. As you guys know, I appreciate you being here. We're going to talk about tonight, women, what do you bring to the table? So that's where we're going to kind of jump off this conversation in. And I always like to tell you what brought this subject up. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I go to Tasha and I'll say, well, what did you think about the topic or things like that? I'm going to I want her to reserve her views mm -hmm. for right now. Um, and as you guys <laughs> know, no, there's a reason being we don't mm -hmm. discuss this uh, ahead of time. You know, when we do come up with these topics, I'll, I'll run it by her to see what the feel is and then see what the energy is like. But we do not discuss our views whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so I want it to be fresh for me as it is to you. So let me get into why the topic came up. I was actually ho having a conversation with Jay, believe it or not, uh, about a week ago. And we were, Jay, your camera's sideways. Jay, turn your camera, you, you're, you're sideways. <laughs> I don't know if he can hear me. But uh, there you go. There you go. There you go, right there. Yeah. Can you hear me, Freddie? I can hear you. I can hear you. Derek said, if you will, send him the link. Okay. Well, the link is actually populated in the um, comment in the, section. Um, yeah, okay. so uh, I'll, 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 he can check that out. Copy and paste if he would, because I don't know if he's connected to me on Messenger. So okay. is he ready to go right now? <clears throat> okay, so um, we'll we'll leave room for him. What's his What's his Facebook Messenger name? Do you know, Jay? Oh, I don't. I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me uh, see if, if I you, can. Uh, yeah, copy and paste, Jay. If you would send that to him, so okay. we can so we can get him going. So okay. how we came up with the topic, I was actually having a conversation with my nephew, uh, Jay, and we were talking about a video that we had seen, you know, about women and men and things of that nature. Uh, I'm, I'm giving you the short version, you know, you know, men, we like to cut to the chase. Women like to go all around Broad Street, but OK. But anyway, <laughs> no, Shots I'm, fired. Just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, okay. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's true. But it's true. But anyway, we was having this conversation and we were talking about, you know, um, how men and women interact and things like that. And he asked me a serious question. Okay, when you get a chance, turn your camera back. You're still sideways. He said, well, do you th what do you think as far as where we're at now, where women are pretty much holding the cards and, you know, uh, uh, we living in the Me Too age and things of that nature? Did I did I think that we would ever get back to a place? you know, where the roles were reversed. So we were talking about that part of it. And, you know, then right behind it, I don't want to give away too much information. I end up seeing this post, so I want to read this to you, ladies. And this is what ultimately had me make the, the decision. A, a, a lady in one of the groups I belong to, she says, these black men have been raised by their mothers. They can cook, they can clean, do the laundry, sweep and mop the floor. They basically can do all chores and they can finance themselves. Stop acting like these black men need you just because you have a vagina. Work on your personality and attitude. Trust me, with or without you, they will survive. So when I read that, I thought about where we are in terms of our relationship with men and women. And I don't think anybody would question that right now women are doing it and and they're doing it big you know they're, they're they're running this thing on all cylinders you know for god's sake we're right on the precipice of having the first black uh vice president uh we got one week to go and if uh he has any kind of slip up heart attack or whatever she might be the president you know i'm not wishing that but you know she's ascended to the highest state music here right now is being run by women but all of these things the dating and everything and so I thought that this was a relevant question, especially in the Me Too era, because as I was doing some research on this, it really hit me hard that a lot of men feel the same way as I do, that we're a little skittish, you know, a little bit hesitant about how to approach, approach women at this stage because of what we say, what we do, things of that nature. And so when that lady posted that, I wanted to bring it to the forefront of women, what do you bring to the table? Let me state a few things off the top. This is not a women bashing session. I know when people first thought that, that they thought that's what this was going to be. It is the opposite. 
It is going to be the opposite, actually. I wanted to have you women present because I wanted y'all to be here to hear what the guys actually have to say about what we want. I remember at the very beginning of doing this, we talked about one time getting together a panel of men to do just this. And so what better subject to do it on? Now, of course, I want you ladies input. Just like I read that statement, I'm in, in a moment, I'm going to ask you women first how much you disagree or agree with that. And then I'm going to get into the subject matter. And I want you guys to, to listen and participate. But at the same time, I'm going to come back to you because I want you guys to be able to tell us what you bring to the table. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And as we do this, this is we, we're going to be respectful of each other. We're going to let everybody get their point out. I promise I'll do my best to get around to everybody. <laughs> so, Tasha, I didn't start with you, but I want to give you the first crack. When we think about the subject, what women bring to the table and what I just read, what's your initial thoughts? Based off of what you just read, it, it's true. There, if we're being perfectly honest, it's true. It is 2021. Men can do for themselves. A lot of them may choose not to, but it is true. And I think sometimes it's really easy to fall into that hole uh, for a lot of, I'm going to say girls, not women, for a lot of girls to to think that, well, I have a pussy that's, that's substantial, that's good enough. And sometimes with this statement alone, uh, what do you bring to the table? It sounds transactional to me. Cause it's like, why do we have to, why does one have to be bringing something to the table? Why can't we rephrase it as if it's, how can you better me? How, what do you add? What value do, do you add to me? I think that would be a better way of phrasing it because either it can go either way. What do men bring to the table? What do women bring to the table? I, I like it. Okay. Candace, what's your thoughts? Ooh. Ooh, my thoughts. I've been thinking about this all day because right now, you know, the, the whole wave is the Kevin Samuels thing. And personally, what we, what he's saying, what we as women can bring to the table does not matter in regards to a high value man. But I'll say this in dating, um, not to make it about race, but a lot of times when I've dated black men, I have to have myself together financially in order to um, date a black man because a black man is not going to want me to be a housewife. Now, dating other races, which I have, they weren't so stuck on what I can bring to the table. They were stuck okay. on what they can buy for me. So okay. those are my thoughts on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good points. I like that. Sherry, where do, you, where, where, where do you stand as you hear this topic initially? Well, I agree with both of what Candace and Tasha said. And I, you know, as far as um, I, I think you're in a partnership. So um, you could you could talk about what, what you can do together. Like and like Tasha said, you know, make it building each other up, pretty much. You understand? And um, I mean, it's a good topic. OK, OK. It. Okay. All right. Darisel, close it out for us. Where, 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 do you, where do you stand on the initial hearing this? <laughs> I don't think any man looks at a woman as like, oh, she can sweep that floor real good. I want to date her. I mean, I don't think that has any bearing either way <laughs> on a relationship. That's not what you're looking for. It's about companionship, somebody you can talk to, somebody you can grow and build with. Somebody that you could see yourself doing things with for the rest of your life. Now, once you get together, those kind of things play a factor, but it's not going to matter if she can cook and clean and wash it. I know plenty of women that's married that can't cook, don't know how to microwave food. So <laughs> I don't think that has any bearing on your, your ability to find a mate. I mean, that stuff don't matter. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kanar, what do you have to say on that? I mean, we talk about like what people can bring, what, what women can bring to the table. I think a lot of times when we talk about that, as far as man goes, usually that's a deficiency. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get the whole help me, but I'm not worried about what a woman can bring to the table, say, financially or in that regard. I'm thinking about how we can build this thing together. How we, how we, how how you can 
facilitate my dreams and I can facilitate yours. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I grew up in a, uh, okay. I grew up in a single parent slash grandparent and grandfather household. Okay. Where I got both sides of the story. So I know how to cook. I know how to clean. I know how, well, maybe not clean, <clears throat> but I know how to take care of myself to where I don't need a woman to come and be domestic. Okay. I need, for me, I, I just like a woman for companionship, for laughter, for, for uh, you know, entertainment, if you could say, and a motherly figure to help raise children. But as far as like bringing stuff to the table, like what are you going to bring? Like, like what can you, the whole bringing stuff to the table is kind of obsolete at this point because those traditional gender roles are starting to kind of kind of phase out. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't okay. women are working now. Women have higher level degrees now to where to ask them to be a PhD or be whatever they are and to ask them to be a, a homemaker all the way at the same time is not always the case because there's a situation like last year for example where Candace worked she had to commute at her job about an hour away. Okay. So essentially, I was actually the homemaker because I was the one that got home first. Okay. But that still didn't take away my role as a man. It's just that I had to take on a different role because that's what it was. Okay. I'll hold that thought. Hold that thought. Yeah. I, I can appreciate that. Derek, jump in here. Based on the, where we started initially, what do you think about the comment commentary that I read and the topic itself? Well, um, I got it on the tail end, but uh, what, what I heard from everybody else speaking about it, from my point of view, um, you, you, it to okay, you might you might have missed the the the, the read. Uh, Hona and Bert, welcome to the conversation. So uh, you guys came in late, so I'm going to read what actually was uh, one of the reasons why I did this topic. A young lady wrote this. She says, these black men have been raised by their mothers. They can cook, they can clean, do the laundry, sweep and mop the floor. They basically can do all chores. They can finance themselves. Stop acting like these black men need you just because you have a vagina. Work on your personality and attitude. Trust me, with or without you, they will survive. Okay. Go ahead. What's your thoughts? Um, from that, I agree with that because when I was how I was raised, I had both my parents in my home. Plus, I had my grandmother; when she was like a second mother to me. And pretty much from the get go, as I can remember back, they, they were always saying that they always be self sufficient, and that what they're saying is, you know, you don't depend on another person, a woman, is coming in your life to, to cook for you, to clean for you. To, to do everything because cause it's a possibility you might not find that helpmate that you can uh, grow with or or marry. So you have to be able to be self sufficient. And I like I said for myself, I don't I haven't uh, never looked as as a, a mate a woman as a uh, what she can bring to the table because it's like we we're gonna be helping each other. And then what I and we will look at each other's goals and we're gonna go from there. So what uh, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about it and see where she's trying to come from and where I've come from and then we're gonna work together. Okay. Okay. Hona and Bert, married couple on together. Uh what do you, where do you guys what are your initial feelings when I re read that statement and in, in, in context of the conversation, women, what do you bring to the table? Either one of you, what do you think? All right, I'll start. Um basically. Uh, my parents weren't together, but still, uh, my mom and my dad were strong influencers in my life. So I got it from both sides as far as how to take care of yourself. Okay. You know, how to make sure that, you know, you can't really depend on anyone else to, to cook your food, to wash your clothes or anything of that nature. Plus, okay. my grandparents on top of that, my grandmom and my grandfather, they were very self-sufficient, especially my grandfather. So he also doubled down on the fact that, hey, you need to know how to cook for yourself. You know, make sure you clean. Make sure you don't have to depend on anyone else for your survival. Okay. For you to maintain. So, okay. um, yeah, I mean, when, when, when I'm going into a relationship, I'm not looking for someone that can do those things for me. It's good if they can, 
and if they want to, but as far as as far as anything, that's not what I'm looking for when I'm going into a relationship. Okay. Hona, get in here. <laughs> You're um, not gonna be fucking up her 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 name all night. It's Hana. It Hana. Hana? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart. It's, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> um, I don't think we have traditional gender roles. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't take out trash. Just I, I don't do it. Um, I don't pump my own gas. He does it. As um, far as cooking, I do it because I have a catering company. So, of course, I'm going to be the one cooking. Okay. And even though someone can cook, uh, I still be <laughs> cook most of the time. Mm -hmm. And when I like, I do most of the household stuff because someone thinks I have control issues. I don't. I just like things a certain way, and I just like the laundry done a certain way. But if I wash the laundry, he folds it and he puts it up. So it's not really traditional gender roles, uh, but it's a lot of women out here who figure because I have certain parts, I don't have to really bring anything. But I'll keep it PG. The box to the table. And okay. man must provide everything else, but I don't believe <laughs> man would that a man has to provide every single thing because we are out here, we're working, we're providing for ourselves. Yes, we want you around, but if anything happens, I feel as though if both parties are working, what if one person loses that job? What if one person can't handle it? If you're in a two-person household, I think both people should take the bulk of it, and just in case something happened, then you know how to survive if someone else happens to lose their job or be disabled. Okay, great thoughts, and I and I I want to give everybody a, an opportunity to kind of initially get their thoughts in. I don't know what happened to Jay; I uh, have no idea. Um, so let me give my thoughts as always. You know, um, <laughs> but the question itself. You know, I knew what it can kind of bring up the connotation. So I want to read something. Uh, this was uh, written by a woman that says, I've been unable to answer this question for years. When it comes to marriage, what do women bring to the table that makes it all worthwhile for a man? Usually people think this is a rhetorical insult to women. It really isn't. It's a legitimate question that women don't seem willing or able to answer. Now, that's from a woman. And I'm saying whether you agree with it or not. Mm -hmm. Having read the part, I think I actually agree with what the young lady said on the thing. Now, of course, we all can do for ourselves. <laughs> and I want to make sure I get some comments in here as well. You know, yeah, I don't know what happened to G. Paul. Of course, we can all do for ourselves. What was interesting to me as I went around the dais is, Dee's married, Candace is married, Hannah and Bert's married, Sherry's married, mm -hmm. Derek's married, Jay, if he was on there, he's married, G. Paul. The only two single people on here is me and Tasha. Now, Tasha mm -hmm. says she agreed with the comments. Maybe this is a single thing because mm -hmm. I agree with the comments 100%. <laughs> my feeling is this. you, I live my life by a lot of sayings. I can do bad by myself. As a single man, I actually cook better than most women, clean better than most women. I enjoy grocery shopping, doing the laundry. There's only one chore in, when it comes to household chores that I don't enjoy doing. That's cleaning the bathroom. Vacuuming relaxes me. I spend two hours in a grocery store. I go to the grocery store just like that's a, a, a mall. It relaxes me. When I was married, I did all of the domestic things. My wife cut the grass. I'm not an outside person. I was raised in New York City, so I hate grass. I'm saying all that to say this. <laughs> I've been able to take care of myself from the time I stepped out there. My thing is, it's not a matter about whether the roles for me are defined. It's about that if you're coming on board and you're not going to make the road easier for me by being able to do some of those things, and the only thing you are bringing is that musty snatch, I'm a, you want to keep it PG, Hona? I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm on this show. We get we we yeah. This is a different show. If all you got is your pussy, I can get that anywhere. And so for me, it's a legitimate question in the sense that yeah, I can do that, and you can too. But I think a part of the problem is that we've gotten away from that. Now that's a, coming from a single man, but it's amazing that the married people, it's it's kind of a different mindset. So as we mm -hmm. get into this, I, I'm going to be interested to see more so 
where me and Tasha break down in the middle of this. Because where I want to go with this now, before you, I know you guys probably want to answer a little bit more on that. I want to I want to break down. We're going to talk about some truth and numbers. And I'm going to give you guys some statistics that I want you to think about that makes this topic even more relevant. Now, we all know that the U.S. population is about 300 and I think 12 million people, right? Right? Of that, okay. per, mm-hmm. of that percentage, you know, 50.52% uh, 50. 50. are women. So that leaves the other half being men, relatively even, you would think, right? Mm-hmm. Now, of mm-hmm. that, 44%, 44% of U.S. men are actually single. That equates mm-hmm. to 100 million people that fall into the category of being single, like me and Tasha. Now, let's break down the demographics mm-hmm. of that, because, Candace, I love the fact that you talked about, as a black woman, your experiences, because I'm not going to sit here and talk about what happens with other races. I'm going to talk about what goes on with us. You know, now we happen to have, you know, Darcells married interracially. Tasha is also mixed. So it's not that that's not relevant, but I'm going to talk about it in the context of black people. Now, of the demographics, I want to I want to share something with you. 40 million people are using online dating services. 40 million people. So that tells you that people want to get together. But I'm going to give you a staggering statistic that I hope blows your mind like it blew mine. When it comes to marriage, which is the ultimate goal, as we would think, right? 67% of white women between the ages of 25 and 54 are married. I'm going to repeat that. 67% of white women between the ages of 25 and 54 are married. For black women, that number is 34%. Mm. Ha! That's why I said it was staggering (laughs) to me. So the question then is... Let me... Go ahead. Not to cut you off, Lee, but isn't it interesting that that that's the, the situation, but Four out of the five black women on here are basically married. So I, I just want to know where these numbers come from because they're so the quick to put down us as black women in our in our I know down. it's the statistics or whatever, but I'll just say this. Hopefully us as black women are doing these the census and everything that these uh statistics come from because it the five out of the or the four out of the five black women on here. It is completely different from what you're stating, and that goes to show you that the numbers are skewed because they will want you to believe that we don't marry, but I've been married twice. <laughs> so let me ask a simple um, question. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. I'm listen stop, to stop, your stop, number. stop right there. Stop right there. <laughs> I'm gonna ask a simple question, and I and I want about a show of hands. How many of you believe that those numbers are skewed by a show of hands? I don't. I don't. No. no. Sweetheart, I, I believe hate they're skewed because I, that's, you okay. Can't. that's okay. That's okay. We got that. We got that. We got your view on that. And but Candace, if you think about where most of our black, most black women want to marry black men, D, and, I'm gonna get, oh, go I'm ahead, sorry. baby. No, 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 please go ahead and finish. I'll let you finish. I'm I don't gonna say to a large majority no, 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 of hold black on, men. No, hold on, hold on, Candace. We let her get her thought out. Can I say this? No, 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 not yet. Not yet. Let her finish her thought. <laughs> Go ahead, Dean. A large majority of black men are incarcerated. They're dead or they don't meet the educational standards that most black women want. If we're the most educated people in this country, you got a PhD or whatever. Do you want a man that's working at McDonald's? Most women, black women especially, don't want that. So, yeah, there are options, but they're not, you know, options that we want. So the numbers are not skewed. The women I work with, majority are white. And I would say, like, most of them are married. And the black women that I work with, like, none of them are married. They have multiple kids. Well, and I, they're not married, so that. it's true. I'll hold on, this. hold on, Candice. Hold majority on, Candace. Women, I want her to finish. I think this, so the majority of the women that I know are married. <laughs> Hannah is on her. Me and Hannah have both been married before. So I, I feel like the numbers are skewed because, it, it, to me, it's not realistic. No, we, yes, I'll say this. They want to put out there that Black women are the least to be married, but that's, to me, that's not the case. Um, okay. But, Go off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah. is, go off. 
That's okay. So, so, so now, okay, so we got those views, and we're not gonna get hung up on 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 arguing that point. I'm gonna end that part by saying this: men lie, women lie. Numbers don't lie. Those are the numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you want to argue with whether black people are filling out the census or not, we're not going to go there. Right now, these are the numbers. That's really the numbers. Mm -hmm. And when I took a poll of the dais, most people accept that. And Daricel, you brought up two good points that highlight that fact. You brought up two good points. Black women are the most educated group in America that they're still not on track to get equal pay until the year 2124. And to your point, Darcel, there's a such thing called a, called a Wilson hypothesis that actually tells why so many black women are not married and the numbers are skewed. High rates of unemplo un unemployment, mm -hmm. incarceration, mm -hmm. undereducated, <laughs> Mm -hmm. And yeah. one we don't, and one we don't talk about homosexuality in the black community. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So Thank we can you. sit here all we want to <laughs> and debate and play with the numbers, but the reality mm -hmm. is, hold on, I think I got a few more people trying to come into the conversation. Yeah. Let's get them in here. I got Terry. I got G. Paul. All right, bringing everybody in here. All hail. All right, you guys. So that's so that's the thing. So that's the thing. So that's the thing. The, the numbers are the numbers. That's the reality. And so when you start to break those numbers down, that's why I called it truth by the numbers. Although the population might be even in terms of men to women, when you start delving in those numbers, the numbers actually speak to that. Because once you talk about black men and you start taking away based on those statistics, it actually speaks to why only 34% of black women between the ages of 25 and 54 are married. Mm. Those are the numbers, folks. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go, let, let, let's, let's talk about the specific things that led to these numbers. Terry and Jay. Uh, Can uh, I say this, though? <laughs> You can. Please, come on. We have four black men on this show mm -hmm. that are not incarcerated, that are not gay. So I, I just, I, I, I you know, should not put it on line. No, 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 hold on. Those I numbers hear are based off of whoever is the census and, and whoever. I'm oh, listening. Yeah. But those numbers are based off of who answered the censor, the census and, and different things. But Lee, you've been married before. Mm -hmm. um, Derek, I understand, is married. Jay is married as well. So I, I still feel like the numbers are too. But I, I'm not against listening to the numbers. I'll say that. That's okay. That's okay. I want to answer that one oh, part. Now, I, I, thought answer that one part. I want to answer that part by saying this. I want to answer it this way for you, Candace. Uh, can, can you hear me? Candace, can you hear me? I think she froze. I want to answer it this way. She and I both work in education. Mm -hmm. And all day long, every day, what we do for a living is we talk to people about education. And so we live in this bubble where sometimes it's easy to get lost by thinking that everybody's educated because that's mm -hmm. what we do for a living. And if you have a college degree, in all likelihood, or you're an educated person, you tend to surround yourself with educated people. If you're a married couple, you tend to surround yourself with married people who's stable. So sometimes we can get caught up in living in this bubble by thinking that that's the reality. In reality, most people don't have a college education, especially black men. And so I'm saying that to bring up the point that as a married woman, she doesn't want to accept the numbers, but all we got to do is step outside. Every nasty, filthy, no good bitch out there don't have a husband. No good. And bitch. they're looking for one. Be a bitch. And that's the plain reality. That, those, are the, those are the facts. Not everybody's happily married. And, 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 and so any, anybody who understand where I'm coming from at that point? Yes. No, no, we get it. Yeah, Hannah's been one Come on, Hannah. Come on in here, Hannah. Oh, um, I'm just saying this. I'm not trying to argue with the numbers. I don't think the numbers are askew, but I do know 
um, I work for a big company and it's like half and half far as the men and I mean the women that's black and white that are married. But a lot of the white women that are married within my company, they are marrying for convenience. And I think our, we try to marry for love. Like a lot of them talk about, oh, I got married because, you know, the household and the, he does this and that. But it's not really love there. So they'll get married. Not It's not speaking against another race, but okay. from my observation, they'll just get married to get married. And it's convenient. We can have this household. We can split bills and this and that. And sometimes a lot of black people, they ridiculous. want to love the person who they marry and actually build with that person. So, yes, it's good. I don't think the numbers are wrong, but I think we okay. both, both races get married for different reasons. I love that you made that point. I got men on here to answer that. And I always like the conversation to lead wherever <laughs> it goes. Men, what are your thoughts on that point you just made that white women marry for That's money? I said some. I ain't say money. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. Do that. Well, I want to clarify your position. Do that. Well, I want to clarify your position. <laughs> White women marry for convenience. So I'll use your, she married for convenience. But okay. black women, some kind of reason, that 34% of them only being married, the reason why they're holding out is because they're waiting for love. I want you guys to speak to that. Hail to the now. Hail on, to the now. I don't know where she came up with that. But, um, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know about black women, black Shit. women mar marrying for love. Like all the black women that I met in my days back in the day, they wanted material possessions. So it, it wasn't no love. So we couldn't <laughs> have got to that point. You know, all the white women, they're just easy going. You know, they, they're not looking for material possessions. So maybe that's why they're they're married. And if it's working so good for them, why don't you just copy their style? Like all these single women, you know, that I'm can't not get married. Them. I'm not you know, laughing at that. <laughs> hey, you can hate the truth, but you know. <laughs> but listen, uh, what I, I found I, is that, like, to me, that's some bullshit. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Candice. We want, I, I want to, I want to get Bird first, and then I'm gonna come to Darcel. Come on, Bird. Yeah, no, um, I, I'll keep it, I'll keep it hundred with you. To tell you the truth, I've seen it on both sides. I've seen some white women that'll get married for the right reason. I see some black women that get married for the wrong reason. It might for the bread or whatever the case might be. I just think it's what you're exposed to. It's just like what the gentleman said before me when he was saying that, well, he saw it the opposite way. He saw the black women being gold diggers. He see white women as being easy. I've seen it the opposite way where I've heard white women say, well, you know what? He can't really do this and he really can't do that. But you know what? He make, he make good money. He can take care of me. He'll be able to take care of the family. He'll be able to provide for my needs and everything like that. And I'm straight. So I think it's all about what you really are exposed to. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really say, well, one <laughs> race do it this way, another race do it that way. Because I've seen it go both ways. Right. Okay, where, I have to. D, get in there with your point and I'm, and I wanna, I'm gonna move on. Go ahead, D. Okay, I was just going to say that this, he's right, this transcends race. It's about the character of the person. But I know that the white women that I know and the white men that I know, it's more ingrained in them when they're younger that you're supposed to get married. I think that's the only thing that's lacking in the black community. Like black men aren't told that you're supposed to find a wife and get married and live happily ever after. But in the white community, that's just part of the like go to college and get a job and get a house. That's part of it. You're supposed to get married. And so for them, it's kind of the upbringing that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to find a wife for the men and for the women, I'm supposed to find a husband. Whereas in the black community, I mean, I don't ever remember anybody telling me that I was supposed to get married or you should get married or you should try to find a good man to marry. I was never told that. Bert, so, that's, you your know, that's your yeah. point, Bert. It's what you're exposed to. That's the point that I right. love that. So we can wipe that off that that you know, it's really what you're exposed to. And Darcel raises a bigger issue that and amongst African-Americans in the community, there's lower expectations of when it comes to things like marriage and things like that. There's lower expectation, even when it comes to mm -hmm. education, responsibility, financial, fiscal responsibility. And that's where we're going with this next. Mm -hmm. I'm going to break down the specific things in here so that we can eliminate those. At the end of the day, it's about getting to how could we, why is that 34%? That if the goal for a lot of women is to be in a successful relationship, it don't have to be married, but to be in a successful relationship, 
Why is that number so wide? So let's go and dispel one of these myths that we talked about, and I just kind of brought it up. Education, because I heard at the beginning mm -hmm. of this conversation, which is true, Darcel talked about women being more educated. That's a fact. Those numbers aren't skewed. Black women are the most educated group in America. Candace and I work in education. The majority of our students are black women. They're the ones getting their degrees, graduated at a disproportionate rate. Right on this day, as they're the ones for the black men that are on here that have degrees, we stand in a very lonely place. Am I wrong or am I right? Somebody speak on this. No, you're right. You're right. It's yeah. very few, few of us that have a degree because a lot of times mm -hmm. while we growing up, and I know when, when I was growing up, it was, about the, it was about the fast money. It was about maybe getting into a factory or getting into this job here and there that paid you a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Then that was good for you. I can speak on that. Uncle Freddie, do you know why I went to college? Do you I actually know? don't. I actually okay. don't. Please. This is, so, this is enlightening. You know, my senior year, I didn't even take my SATs. I had no plans to go to college. We never really discussed college in my family, ever. The only reason mm -hmm. I went to college, well, really at tech school, is because you worked at ITT, and you told my father he could get a discount. So if it wasn't <laughs> for you, I would not be educated because you got that job. <laughs> and so uh, 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 there's a side story to that. At the time when I was working for ITT Tech, I wanted my other nephew, Jay, turn your camera to yeah, go he, on yeah, my he discount. Dropped yeah, he dropped out. He dropped out. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted out. Jay to go on my discount at that time. And so it's it's amazing that Gary was listening. It was targeted towards Jay, and his parents were dead set against it. And here my youngest nephew heard it and end up getting an education. But I want to ask the guys something and then the women as well. But I want to get to my guys first because, Derek, I want you to get in here. Bert and Terry, I want you to get in here. And I don't know why Jay keep popping in and out like a goddamn whack-a-mole, but okay. <laughs> That's what he is. <laughs> so <laughs> when it comes to education and in terms of what a woman brings to the table, how much does that matter for you? Zero percent. Zero. I can, care. I can care less that. about your education. You can work at McDonald's, Walmart. I don't <laughs> care. As long as you have a job and bring something. I don't care how many degrees you got. That doesn't excite me. I mean, it's good, you know, I guess if you're married and you have kids, you know, you're financially stable, but it has zero percent. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Come on, Derek. I agree with you. Um, I, when you meet a when you meet a woman that like I said, when I you don't that, first thing in your mind is not uh hey did you finish high school? Did you, work, <laughs> did you get your PhD? That's not, that doesn't come up in the conversation. That comes up as you get to know each other and you share those things. It's not It's not going to be a breaking point if you've been spending time with this woman and all of a sudden she tells you, well, I got a second grade education. You've been talking to her that long. All of a sudden you're going to just, no, it's not going to be a, it's not going to even be a factor in the matter. All right. Jay, are you on or you you still with us? I, I am now. I'm I have my wife had called, so I clicked over, so I'm just catching the tail end of the conversation. Okay. So you're coming in late, but how much does education, we've already established that women are more educated than men. And then when you get into African-American women, they're the most educated women on the goddamn planet. And so for men, does it? how much does education play in what a woman brings to the table? I don't know if, um, if education is it's hugely important in the beginning if you if you uh, if this person is somebody you feel like you can grow with. So when me and my wife together, when we first got together, she was in college and I was in college, and we you know we uh, we both had ambitions on getting our getting our uh, our degrees and what have you. But we actually went together and got our master's degree, so okay. you know, we grew. Uh, but you know in the beginning, I mean, unless you just you know you know as small as a bag of rocks, that may be a little different, you know. So okay. Maybe a little important, but I don't know. I don't know if that's just the deal breaker, depending on the chemistry. Okay. Yeah. Darisa, I want to come to you, sweetheart, from where you sit, because you brought that point up, and it was a valid point, and it's a real point. From your experience, what? Do, how much do you think education plays, and what a woman brings to the table, and ultimately making it to that altar or that top spot? 
I don't think it's important for like when it's a man looking for a woman, but I do think it's important for a black woman looking for a man. I think that we hold a lot of value on somebody who's our equal. And so we want somebody who not that we have to teach and take care of. We want a man that's a man that can hold his own. And so if I'm the primary provider in our household, I mean, I might have a problem with that. I don't want a man that I have to be his mother. I want a man that can hold his own, you know, so he, you know, not necessarily, you know, in that situation would have to take care of me. But I want a man that if I needed to be taken care of, he could. And if, if we not on the same level, or if you don't have a degree, I mean, you don't have an education at all. You don't have a business, you know, and you're working at McDonald's and you're borrowing my car and all these things. I mean, for me, it's not going to work. I mean, okay. you know, there's more at, you know, at a certain age, there's more to it than love. There's a lot of factors that play in it, you know, and I think that's part of the reason a lot of black women are married because they're, they're not willing to settle. Okay. Tasha, you're a single yes. woman and you're an educated woman. Yes. Speak to this topic for you. A couple of things. Uh, specifically, when you were discussing the black men, my mother and my stepmother both have their degrees. My stepfather and my father, neither one of them have degrees, but they are the breadwinners in their house. So for me, I know it's not important for him to have a degree because it doesn't necessarily mean he's not the breadwinner. There's tons of men who work hard jobs such as these trade jobs that make great money and I'm I know for me that's I for my ideal partner it's not going to be someone who's educated that's not important for me I want a hard working man someone who's not afraid to work hard that's what excites me that's what turns me on the degrees on the wall that's all fine and good I ne whenever I meet someone I never lead with that you'll see it, I'll never lead with that I'll never tell you that because it's it's not that big of a deal to me. Okay. Candace, get in here. You're an educated <laughs> woman. Mary, yeah. both of you are educated. What part do you think education plays in a relationship for men and for women? Now, I heard it doesn't play any part. And I'm sorry if I squint because I'm on my phone now. And it's like, you guys look like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um. <laughs> I've dated men where education was important. I've dated doctors and I've dated lawyers that wanted me to be on the same caliber. So it all depends on your circle because some people, some men may say that, oh, it does not matter. But I've dated doctors that will say, oh, I want to date another doctor. Yes, you're in business, but you're a scam artist because they, they seem to think people in business are scammers. Wow. Um, okay. So it, it just depends on your experience. <laughs> I know, I know overall. Um, it for men it does not matter, especially with listening to Kevin Samuels. Degrees don't matter, but there are some black men that it does matter, especially those doctors and lawyers. So okay, so it depends on the circle you said. Yes, Hana, what's your thoughts on this? I know you're married, but for you, wh what part did it, does an education play in it? Okay, so I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna do two parts. One. And for as me, I don't think it really matters if you have an education or not. I would prefer it. But if you don't, there's a lot of people working with them, I feel, who just has the experience. And it's still getting top dollar. But like back then, you needed the education. But now you actually need the experience or the education. So okay. it changes. But it just depends. Like my, my dad had a master's degree. But my mom and my father got divorced. My mom has a master's working on her PhD. I don't know why she's still in school. But um, my stepdad had didn't even finish high school. And they've been married for 23 years. Okay. So I just really think it depends on what the person brings. Because some it's people that have degrees and are working in Walmart and McDonald's. And Very true. It doesn't, it doesn't really necessarily define you. When I grew up, I couldn't bring home a B, I couldn't bring home a B in my household. Okay. So that's why I had no choice but to go to college. I had to be a straight A student. That I I didn't have a choice because my mom she wasn't having it, and okay. so I didn't have a choice. So I but I don't I I have two teen I have teenagers, you know. Well, one teenager, so I don't really think if my kids, I don't think when they get to a certain age, if my son decided he wasn't going to go to college, 
and if he wanted to get a job for experience, I don't think because of the era we're in now, it would matter. I would prefer it, but I don't think the era that we're in now, I don't think that the education is really needed. But I do know some men who prefer women that have an education or have a degree. Okay. So I don't think it's all necessary that everybody's saying, oh, you could just be dumb as a box of rocks and hey, I'm with it. I don't think that's necessary. Depends on, like Candace said, your circle and who you're okay. with. Okay. Bert, I was looking at your facial expression there, brother. What you got to say? Uh, this is what I say. I don't give a goddamn what you have. To tell you the truth, I don't give a shit. As long as you, as long as you, as long as you bring to the table, I like Bert. What they all talk about? Thank you, Bert. Thank you. Know what I'm iron sharp and iron. If you have a degree, that's great. The world is okay. But guess what? If you don't, that's all right. But as long as you hustle, as long as you you bring something to the table, that's all that matters is what completes you. All the stuff of who trusts who and who don't trust who and doctorates and this and that, I don't give a shit about that. Yeah, get up out of here with that. Terry, Terry, okay. What meets your needs, what meets I mean, your individual needs. Now, if you don't trust a person that's low level, McDonald's, Burger King, whoever the hell, wherever you're working at, then fine, you ain't gotta be with them. Keep moving on and find that person that you they can complete you, but that's what it's all about. It's about what completes you. I love it. Sherry, I ain't forgot about you. You sitting up in here like a house fly on the wall. What you got What's to up, say? Auntie? I mean, I'm not an educated woman and we didn't grow with an educated mother and she raised 11 kids. You understand? But that didn't make her be a dummy. She was that woman that took care of the kids, fried the bacon and went out to work and everything else. So it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? But I did want my daughter to be educated so she can have what I didn't have. So she do have a degree. You understand? But I don't think it's a matter of a two Hana um, comment that she, she was saying. I think, Hana, uh, you, do you know, especially in New York, a lot of these women don't even seem like they be interested in getting married. Black women, should I say. They should. You know, I've been married 31 years. And I said, if I had to do it over again, uh, I, I marry for love. But if I had to do it over again, I'm married for convenience and some cash and everything else. <laughs> Shit. I, 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 I concur. <laughs> uh, I, I'm on that same point. I, I, I agree with my sister on that. Yeah. I agree with her. So let me, so let me close. Uh, Terry, did you have a last thought before I close no. this part out? So no, let good. me close this part out by saying this. My niece, her daughter, just got her bachelor's degree. What was it, about a month and a half ago? Posted it on Facebook. She got the, the traditional congratulations, blah, 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 blah. Here's the reality. She would have gotten more attention had she come on with a short skirt and 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 done the twerk of her life. If she had shook her ass like it never didn't matter, that would have went on for a week. The value of education, unfortunately, when it comes to our people, is just not put on a high, high list. And that's the reality. And as a single man, uh, Bert, you nailed it. I could give two shits about what your education is. In fact, uh, I don't know how many of these brothers on here willing to admit this. The easy, the, the woman that's the most educated is actually the easiest woman to get. Maybe she, so already, she, she already have her education. <laughs> she got a better house than I do. Like, you know, those <laughs> ones that's going the most. Who gave me trouble is the nasty little 51 working in church's chicken. <laughs> now she want to know and how much I make and this and that. But the one that's got a degree, PhD, she dropped in my clothes with no trouble at all. And so education doesn't mean it doesn't mean a thing. You are correct. She's I educated. She might not think her draw. You are correct because I was looking for I want to have a good time. I'm not going to lie. Uh, thank you. Come, come confirmation. <laughs> yep. Confirmation. What's she, what's she double confirmation. No, Double confirmation. No. Double confirmation. <laughs> double confirmation. <laughs> double confirmation. But Let's can't. go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sweetheart. Okay, so I understand. I, I agree that it's probably different because I'm not saying I'm better than anyone, but I don't see myself dating someone working at McDonald's. Not because of that, but at a certain age, you have to have some growth. And if you've been right. a kid here since 17 and you just don't want to grow and stay being the cashier and making minimum wage, it's not going to work for me. I'm not, there's a lot of people who just want to stay in that same occupation 
for the rest of their life. So I'm not saying anything against it. No, no, you're right. You're right. Now, I agree, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that part. And as I leave that subject of education, that's what makes it so sad then. It's because you got far too many black women out here settling for men that doesn't bring anything to the table. But I used to work I used to work in property management and what you learn in property management is 80% of the apartments that you rent, you know who the leaseholder is? It's a woman. And that's because the man usually don't make three times the income. He usually doesn't have a stable job and he has a criminal background history. And so what does it say that a woman is willing to go get the apartment and let a guy lay up in there playing video games all day with no jobs, but she still live him to death. And so you want to you want to talk about where that thirty four percent is coming from? Ding, 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 ding. That's a part of it right there. But let me say this. <laughs> let me say this, Lee. Me and Hannah are very similar. We date the corporate thug, so we're one of okay. men. If you're in business, <laughs> let, let's say, let me look at you, Black. Easy pray. Easy. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Easy. I got you. I got you. I feel like say you say in your younger days, I feel you were a guy that I would have dated in your younger days. Oh. So mm. thank you. I'll I'll, t- I'll take it. I'll See, take and it. that look, listen, I love him to death. He is one of my best friends. But you guys hear the way he talks. I think black women have this want to fix stuff. Like he he don't want to be fixed. He's fine the way he is. He broke. broke. Okay, they I don't make that this? part no more. <laughs> I, don't, I don't view him as broke. I, I just view him as I mean I don't either but broke. they <laughs> but yeah, women feel like they can I'm, change him. I've right, known right, him for twenty years. He, yeah, he's the same person. And he, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Hannah. There is a lot of women out here who feel as though they have to change a man, and that mm. bothers me. Like the reason why him and I, Thank like you. we both were divorced before, and when I was married before, I had to be a certain person. I couldn't be myself. He stated he couldn't be himself. And you don't have to change who you are for anyone. Like, I don't feel as though you have, if you're yourself, that's what should be honored and respected and wanted. So if you have to change yourself or compromise who you are just to be in a relationship, then that's not the relationship for you. Now, unfortunately, we both got, he's he's older than me, of course, but we both got married young around the same ages. So we, you know, we didn't really realize that you don't have to change yourself. But you saying that he don't have, you don't like a lot of women and some men feel as though, oh, let me change this person. Yep. But if a person mm-hmm. want, if you feel as though the person has to change, then they'll change when they want to. Absolutely. But it's the difference between trying to change someone and having Absolutely. growth within that person. Absolutely. I, I agree. agree. I agree. I agree. Hold on, hold on. I, 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 I got to move to the. Me. I got to move to the next point. I agree with you. I got to move <laughs> to the next point, which is finances, because <laughs> one of the things that always come up. You know, especially in this Me Too era, is uh-huh. what we're talking about. They're on the grind, they're on the hustle, and then and, and mm-hmm. they do make, a, make their own money. So I want to ask the panel again, and uh, I want to start with you, Jay, on this one. Okay. When it comes to paying the cost to be the boss, what effect do you think does this have on women in terms of what they bring to the table? You know, I think that in today's world, um, you know, times have changed. When you say it costs to be the boss, you know, nowadays I I live in a two income household. My wife works just as hard as I do, but she she um she she definitely takes care of her business, you know. And um, so I don't I can't uh, knock anybody else's situation. You know, if you feel like that, you know, if you don't want your wife to work, you make that kind of money, then so be it. Um, but some relationships, it does have an adverse uh, effect because, you know, at the, at the end of the day, the light bill, the gas bill, the, the mortgage, you know, things, you know, things cost. And you got somebody that's not working with you or, you know, they feel as if that, you know, all that responsibility falls on you. That can be that, that can cause a real strain on a relationship. Like, you what know, do you mean by pay the cost to be the boss? That's that, my take on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, my thing is, Terry, we've established that only 34% of black women between the ages of 25 and 54 are married. And I, I 
put out there that one of these is be, has to do with that whole mentality of I make more money than you and I'm paying the bills and we're hearing it as well, which you've got to bring to the table. How much of that is a factor into why that they're still single? Oh, yeah. I mean, that is tricky because, I mean, like, just like you make your own money and pay your own bills, it's like, so do I. So, like, when we come together, we can't, you know, work out some type of arrangement. It just it ain't going to work. But, like, when you say pay the cost to be the boss, I think of, like, the breadwinner, you know what I'm saying, who kind of, like, thing. you know, kind of, like, make the decisions. And I don't think women really want to take that role. They're fine with a man being in that role, you know, paying the cost to be the boss. But when they make more money, and you know, some man will say, okay, cool. You know, I'll follow your lead. And most women don't don't like that. But at the same time, they don't want the man to take the lead. So I think that's more of the problem. Darcel, I see your face. I know yeah, you yeah. got something to say. <laughs> I, look, I, I don't think it's that women don't want to do it. I think when you're thinking about normal, traditional gender roles, you always think of the man being the king of the house. And I am not taking care of anybody's son, point blank, period, ever, except my own. And when he's an adult, I expect him to be the head of his household. So no matter how much money I make, you know, if you want to be the king of this household, you need to act as such. That's the way I feel about it. So, no, I'm not going to take care of you. And, you know, we can split things a certain way. But as far as, you know, if you want to be the head of this household, you need to act as such. And, you know, part of that is financially act as such. So, yeah, I don't agree with Terry in that aspect. I, I don't think that women don't want to do it. I don't think that we should have to do it. Mm, selfish mm. money. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Derek. So Derek. I, I got a question. I, I'm going to okay, make sure Derek. I understand what you're saying, Derek. Sell. So you're saying yeah. if you're making six figures, I'm just throwing a number out there. And your husband's making, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars. You still expect him to take care of the lion's share of the bill? Yeah, that's what she Hold said. On. That's what she said. Okay. Did she freeze up? Okay. Now, what? No, what did you answer say? for herself? But Jay, ask the question again. Oh, we lost her. We lost I think her. we lost her. Yeah. yeah the husband but maybe the other ladies can answer that question. Well, then that may be that may be a, a single I'm, point of view, you know, because nowadays, I. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm married, but even when I was single, yeah. I had uh, when I was out there in, in the in the dating game, I used to date, and my my people can vouch for it. Most of the women I dated made more money than I did. They had their own place, their own cars. Uh, when me and Black was out there in the streets, most of the time we went to their places. They took us out, mm -hmm. and then you know we had our own places too. We were independent, and so you know then when they came our way, we we uh you know we did we did our thing. But no, you're back there. So my question was, I want to make sure I understood what you were saying. You said regardless mm -hmm. of how much money you make. So if you're making, you know, this goo gobs of money, your husband is not making what you make. You're still saying the responsibility, the lion's share of the bills falls on the husband. And you're not going to, you're not going to help. I, okay, so in our house, my, me and my husband both make pretty good income. Carousel, so I it's say a yes or no answer. You gotta category go. ring. But we, <laughs> but we, we do pretty well. And first of all, I don't date guys that make less than me. That's, that's number one, because I feel like I, you know, I like a certain okay, lifestyle. So, you, so I need a man that can help me, you know, or, you know, accommodate my lifestyle. So I don't date men that if I'm making, Three hundred thousand. I'm not gonna date a man that's dating twenty or thirty thousand. I mean, that's just okay. not me. I'm sorry. I mean, some girls are with it, but that's just not me. But if you know, but if I were to make more than him, just say he lost his job or whatever, we'll we'll use that situation. Then I mean, you can only be out of work for a certain amount of time before I'm like this. No, because I'm not. I'm not doing it. My husband now knows I'm not doing it. Like that's not the way we roll. He knows what we do. So no, I'm not. I'm not. Like I said, I'm not taking care of anybody's son. Period. What's the, what's the time, time frame? What's the time frame on that? Frame. He's got three we months. We're in a pandemic right now. Months. So what's the time frame on that? Three months. No, I don't care. It's not bad, but you got enough education. You can find a job. Three months. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you can find a job, but it may not be paying, you know, that corporate salary. 
<laughs> if he get two jobs, it'll equal up. You oh, <laughs> or three. Okay. He got three months. <laughs> he better bring that income back up to over hers. Is what you're saying. <laughs> Don't so, lose so, your job, so, first of all. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Who? Uh, somebody was trying to say something. Yeah. There's, well, for me, what I've what I've seen from what my experience is, is this: like you said, paying the cost to be the boss. Okay. Like if you. If you are if you're the breadwinner per se, more than likely that individual, if it's a woman or man, gonna mostly gonna feel like they're the ones who are gonna make the lion's share of the decisions to make. But if they're sharing it, but a lot of times it's it's not gonna be shared. And what I've seen from experience is that even if a like you said, like dear says stated, if a woman makes this amount of money and uh, makes three hundred thousand, and the guy makes two two fifty or it could be made three hundred. Some women is not gonna be willing to yep. as you say let go of the reins and we'll say they they won't compromise. It's gonna be my way or the highway. Mm. So that's my experience, you know, okay. and so maybe okay. I maybe I'm okay. short sided on it, but that's what I've seen. I say it doesn't matter if the, if she makes three hundred thousand or fifty thousand. If she doesn't, if she feels like some women just feel like it's a me too. I, we gonna we gonna do this together, or even if they want you to, to share it, they gonna say at the end of the day, some women gonna say, well, regardless of we sharing, you are gonna still gonna do the instead of fifty fifty, you gonna do sixty forty, and then maybe next week you are gonna be eighty twenty, mm-hmm. but it's never gonna be <laughs> eighty twenty that way. But okay. that's, that's what I'm saying. Let me get one more one more married view in here, and then I want to get a single person in Tasha. So uh, either yeah. Candace and Kennard or Hannah and Bert. I want well, I want a married yes. view. Who want to go? What's Come the on, question? Candace. Can I go? <laughs> go. So, well, I'll say go. this. When I, when I met my husband, I did not want him to make less than me. So, yes, he, he did have to make more than me. Um, but we, yeah. we make money. So... That's it is what it is, but I want to hear what Hannah has to say. Um, so okay, come on, Hannah. We both make pretty great money. He does make more money than me. Um, as far as what we should do, I'm going to be honest. I I kind I'm not a hundred percent in agreement with D, but I'm kind of on it. You know, the a part of it because I feel like the man should be the provider. However. Even if he pays more bills and everything mm-hmm. to me, if a bill needs to be paid, I'm not going to buy, well, where's your money? I'm just going to pay the bill because we both have to live and survive. Okay. okay. So that's how I stand on it. However, my, my growing up, my parents, they didn't, my, my dad, when, he, when they were still married, he paid everything. My oh, stepdad, yeah. my mom makes triple what my stepdad makes, but my stepdad still pays the mortgage. He still pays the car notes. And okay. my mom can pay every single thing plus more. But as the man, you know, the examples I had in my life, that's what the man did. So I kind of see where you're saying. However, I don't think I don't think that it matters really if the man takes the whole majority. I mean, all the bulk. I don't. I think they may maybe take a little bit majority of the bulk. But okay. far as the man has to provide every single thing for the household, I don't. I'm not in agreement with that. Now, I'm, I'm be honest. Okay. In my previous marriage, I never paid one bill. Um, I well, I'm sorry. I paid the bills, but I didn't provide the money. But I had okay. to take care of every single household. I got you. See, so this what I don't. Mm-hmm. This what I don't get. Like all these women keep stressing about money, money, money. Especially when you're in a relationship, the guy pays the lion's share. What the hell are you doing with your money? <laughs> like, where is it going? <laughs> Whatever we want, because we ain't gonna pay no bills. That's what then, like Hannah just said, when we get a divorce, you got this big stash of money just piled up, <laughs> gone and bounced. Hell to the no. <laughs> well, and, I, and I'm with Terry on this. Okay, so I guess the women on this panel are more traditionalists. Well, so they don't. No. They, y'all, the, the the women here are not saying, you know, they they're not subscribing to the whole equality when it comes to men and women. No, what's well, trouble? Let me tell you. Let this me get my opinion why, out first. Yeah. Why, 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 why would we subscribe to that? Though? Can I ask this? Why would we subscribe to that when y'all just said our degrees and all that don't even matter? Don't even matter. I understand what you're saying. Say again. Thank you. Okay, brother, let me ask, let me tell you something. You, your wife mm-hmm. asked me one day, your ex-wife asked me one day, 
Sherry, what do you mean when you told your husband, no, God, God didn't pay for the gas. I know you don't think I'm paying with my money. This is what I said to my husband. So she asked me, Sherry, what do you mean by your money? And I said, yeah, exactly. My money is my money. His money is our money. She, she, she couldn't get with it. And, so you, still feel like, and you still feel that way? I, I sure do. Okay. And I don't care if the bill is due, he's better pay. Or okay. whatever, he's better find a way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Get in here. Both of my I, nephews are right here. Y'all know who I am. Okay. Y'all know how I give it up. Okay, time to get in here. I, you know what? From what I'm listening, I think it's cultural because how I was right, it was, it's not like this. It was not an I, it was a we. It was our money, our bills. It was us. And for, for me, as far as finances, when it comes, I don't, you don't have to make as much money as I do. That's, that's fine. But if you're grinding and you're doing your thing twice as hard and I can see that you're out there doing what you can or working two, three jobs because, you know, that's what you want to do or that's how you get it, then, th then OK, that's fine. As long as I can see that you're making an effort and you still have your, you know, like your own things, you're still bringing something else. I'm OK. I don't mind being your partner. And I thought when you're married, you're supposed to trade those eyes for wees. But that's just me. No. no. That's okay. 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 That's Hold what on. I thought, Tasha. Okay. And I'm married. So, 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 so hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So I want to so end it. So, let me, so let me finish. So, so I'm not finished, but oh, I'm going to say my little part. I'm sorry, Bert. I'm sorry, Bert. Then we're going to move on to the next subject. Uh -oh. We're gonna move to the next subject. Okay. No, you said something to her. I'm, I'm, I'm loving Bird, but let me say what I what I'm hearing. It it does explain the great chasm in the numbers because there's a great big hypocrisy here. It's amazing how when you want traditional values to come into play, then you accept them, but then when you don't want it and it doesn't skew in your favor, that you can have those views that. Okay, my money is my stand. money. And you're, it's a it's a great big double standard in there. So I'm gonna say this as a single, and again, this is coming from married people. Maybe that's why I'm single. Me and a single person, we kind of agree on the same terms. Uh, uh, <laughs> Terry and all of us. Maybe that's why I'm still single. But I'm gonna say this: I don't it make is. a whole lot. I don't make a whole lot of money. I make enough money to lead a, a quality of life that's okay for me. So if I meet that Mrs. Wright and she makes more money than me. Well, damn it, then she's going to have to uh, uh, fill the lion's share of the bill. I'm not a lazy man. I I, I know what my value and worth is. And in, and if she's willing to overlook that because I, if I got to go out and get a second job just to make more than that, this that, that's probably why I'm still single. And that's probably why a lot of women are missing out on a good thing because I'm going to say it this way. You know what I'm saying? Not every guy... Sometimes we hit whatever our potential is. Some guys are able to make the six figures, and some guys, what they do, what they've accomplished in life, whether it's educated or not, they've hit what they're going to be. That don't make them bad men. That don't mean they're not worthy. But that's as far as they can go. But my thing is, if you fall for that guy, and he has the other qualities, and you're stopping that from progressing because – He's not making enough money. I think you're losing out on a great opportunity. Now I'm not knocking D for wanting what she wants because we established no, no, because we established way back in other shows before. This yeah. is what you can negotiate. And oh, yeah. she's been able to negotiate relationships that's going to cater to what she wants. But by that same token, I can say on my end that I've never been a paymaster. As Jay said from the beginning, I've always been fortunate enough that with what little bit I brought to the table, it was enough. I knocked bitches down in my apartment that didn't even, I ain't had no furniture. You know, I had a mattress on the floor and they still put their legs clean behind their ears and paid for everything. So it really comes down to what you're able to negotiate. But and consider they, this, Freddie. Finances <laughs> is the number one cause of divorce. You can cheat. You can do a lot of things. But if the money situation isn't right and then factor, OK, so you're oh, dating right. and you're struggling. What about when we have kids? It's just going to put more strain on her. Which so brings me to my put... next subject. Perfect okay. timing. Perfect, <laughs> perfect segue. Perfect segue. <laughs> which brings up children and family. And so Daricel brings that perfect segue that when there's kids involved in family, 
And so she's right in a sense that what's going to happen, she's right. Many marriages fail because of financial reasons. So let's talk about where that falls into it then, because we talk about children and families. And I'm going to start off first going by saying this. As a single man with no kids to speak of and my quality of life, yeah, I know that's a funny subject, but that's a whole nother thing, y'all. But okay, <laughs> stop it. But I here's my situation. I know what I make for a living every day, and that allows me to be able to drink what I want to, eat what I want to. I live a pretty comfortable life. You know, I'm able to go to Kroger's and pretty much eat uh, shrimp and lobster whenever I want to. Hmm. Hell, I go to, to Jonesboro. I blow $200 on crab legs, and I don't, don't think a thing of it. Now, let's say I meet somebody and she got three little kids or whatever. Mm. Now, you want to talk about financing. Mm. So now, am I supposed to take on the full burden of that? These three little monsters ain't mine. Yeah. And then, and then on top, hold on, stop. And on top of that, we've already established on other shows that you don't want me to hit them or nothing like that. <laughs> so I'm supposed to take that in, change my quality of life. Go from eating shrimp and lobster to all of a sudden shit. I gotta eat eat some hungry man dinners. Really? And work two jobs, and you can't oh, stop really? when you get over there. And you well, can't. You should be trying to start to start to it. But she come as a package. When you pick up somebody <laughs> and they got three kids, they come as a package. So you picking up that so, package. So listen to what she's say saying. Sherry, say Go ahead, Sherry, say that again. And right. that's why, and that's why that package oftentimes get unraveled. <laughs> Stuffed into a garbage can because it's gonna stay on board. You unwrap that pack. Oh, that's why you use it and you put when that pack in the out. You choose, you choose a better packet. Most <laughs> women that I know, and I'm speaking from experience, that have children, they provide that before you come in the circle. So when if you came in the circle, then you're just the extra income. That's However, right. like I had two kids from my extra previous income. marriage when I came into this. But Carrie, however, I want you to go next. However, if I mean, well, I was told I was being too independent, so I had to calm down. <laughs> um, he had to let me know I was being too independent. Like, you got somebody else here. Um, That's right, but bro. However, with or without that, as a mother, you can provide that. Like, we, I say these kids are spoiled. They, everybody thinks they are. They're not. Um, are they? Yeah. Okay. But they spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> But with or without that, if someone else came, I'm happy he, he's in my life. But however, if somebody else, if, if any other people came in, any parents that came in, usually the the mother will provide that before you come in the picture. So you don't have to alternate your lifestyle and change it. You just add it on to what's already there. Most Terry, of it. I'm not saying all because we have some. Terry, have Terry, is it that simple? Eat McDon kids eat McDonald's every night and don't care. Terry and Derek and Jay, is it that simple? I want to go first. Go ahead. No. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, D. You go ahead, man. I don't think it's that simple, you know, because, you know, I'm single. I just have one daughter. We live a really, really nice lifestyle. And I, you know, and I love kids. You know, I have no problem meeting a woman with like maybe one kid. But once you get two or three, you know, depending on how much you make, your lifestyle is going to change. And I know they don't depend on you uh, initially for any type of financial support. But as all the women have said on this panel, except for Tasha, you know, it's all about the money. And so, like, especially if I get to this point where I'm making a lot of money, you think I'm going to choose your package, you know, with two or three kids over, you know, some of these women with no kids or maybe one kid? No, just like you overlooked me when I was broke. When I get money, I'm going to overlook you because, yeah, I want this nice family and I, I don't want nobody with your mindset. Yeah, you're going to leave me if. My business don't work out and I'm broke for a few months and you're going to save all your money and bounce. No, nah, I think I'll pass up on that package. All right. Come on. Come on, fellas. I dropped the mic on that. I think he said enough for all of us. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Tasha, what do you got to say on your single woman? You know me. I will not date a man with kids. That is my big no-no. There are no rules to it anymore. There's no anymore you want to you want me to be able to provide or live in a house with someone that I have no say so over how they treat me oh you crazy as hell my dogs won't even act like that towards me absolutely not and so oh, man, me, I, I like that though Tasha Let us huh? I had kids and I met my wife oh my I'm, wife I'm my queen 
She yeah, has a lot of say so in my household. Yeah, my my dad my dad was like that with my stepmom. But nowadays, when you got married, it was different. Nowadays, it's different. They don't want anyone to say anything to their kids. They damn near don't even want their siblings, the aunts and the uncles, to say anything to the kids to correct them. So no, that's for me. That's a big no no. So I'm not gonna. I don't put think you can say that about all guys. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. dis- I disagree with that. I got a both daughter. Sides, yeah, I don't want men and women. Here. That's on both let, sides. Let me, let me comment on one part of this that I think is getting overlooked that, that nobody said anything about. And that's why I said children and family, you know, as one of the factors that I think that contributes to uh, a lot of the women in terms of what they bring to the table. When you're with somebody, I'm talking about a serious relationship, we only focusing on the financial end of it. That's we, we transition from that one topic to the next. The part we're not talking about is you also inherit in that person's family as well. You know, when you with them, you, you know, and the serious you dating their family. I think that's a factor. I, I think that also is a, a big contributing factor to it as well. Because I think with the with this era we living in now, and we talked about this on other shows, for example, you got grandmothers now that's in their 40s, you know. And you got mamas, three and four kids, and kids and kids. And so it, it in the black community, it's it's a very sad thing to, to, to see that because that's a lot to take on a heavy responsibility that when you come into somebody's lives and you in there seriously, you inheriting not just that person, you inheriting all of the baggage that goes along with that person. And because we've gotten away from a lot of the traditional values and views. I think that's a major factor as well. So we talked about early in this conversation how white women make marry for convenience or whatever. I've often said this, and this is just my personal opinion. I think white women, Asian women, other races a lot of times, they marry smarter in a lot of sense because of they look at all of those factors. So somebody said that black women, they marry for love. I agree with that in the sense that for a lot of black women, they they don't look at those factors. And so getting into a relationship, you inherit somebody. Let's say if your man is, wow. is a far wicked man, but all of a sudden you got his brothers and his cousins and this and that, and they're involved in drugs and things like that. You inherit all of those situations into your household. And so I think that that should go into better decision making. And unfortunately, look at our communities. Look at our communities and look at the average households. As a single man, you know, when you go to meet a, a woman now, forget about her sometimes. Her situation a lot of times is enough to turn me off. Just the situation yep. itself. You know. Yeah, I, you know, you know, Come on. I think about on, when you when you talk about the situation, there there are a lot of circumstances that you know black men and 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 um dating a lot of times all you got all, all you have is a situation where you have a you're dating a a single mother you know what i'm saying and that's the situation now i i love the fact that you bring up the fact that of the situation because our situation as a black community is not the same as other communities Especially the the, the the further you get in the age uh, spectrum of this, 34, 40, or whatever you want to, most of the time you're going to have, I'll say this, when I was dating, even in dating game before I met Candace, the last um, three situationships I was in, those chicks had kids. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was, right. it, it, now maybe that, maybe that's a, uh, a chopped and screwed version of what reality is, but that was my reality. Right. She had uh, old girl had kids, and the the good part about it is they had they they had um, it wasn't multiple kids, but it was kids nonetheless. And I think for a black man, honestly, to say I'm not going to date a single mother, you you're kind of kidding yourself after the 30 plus beyond phase because most of these chicks have kids you know and if you want to um say that that all of this is a a part of okay well this is no this is not the black reality in my opinion 
when you get into that phase, most of these women have kids. And, and honestly, I was fortunate. Well, I ain't going to say fortunate because having kids is a great thing. I got two beautiful daughters and a, a son. But most of this, once you get to a certain threshold of this, there are kids involved. And if you think you're going to have a situation to where there's no kids involved or if you were dating a single mother 30 plus, then you might be ki- you might be kidding yourself. And then you look at if she's if he or she is 30 plus and don't have no kids, then you're like, well, damn, what, what happened to you? Mm-hmm. So everything, so everything you're saying, Canard, <laughs> is so accurate, and that <laughs> highlights where the where a lot of the problems come in because if you fall for somebody and, and we're not knocking kids, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want this part to get into that we're knocking kids and stuff like that. We're just talking about reality. You can love is not enough to live on. Love don't pay the bills. Let's say you fall in love with somebody and they have two or three kids, as you said, especially if you get up in age, you know, so you got somebody that's in their 30s and they have two or three kids. You might love them and even love the kids. But we've already established that one of the factors for black women, why they're not in relationships, is underemployment. The black man doesn't make the income. He doesn't have the education level. So now you're talking about bringing him into a situation, even though there's love, to where now there's multiple kids. And if he can't make enough money to satisfy D by herself, how in the hell is he going to make enough money to satisfy the woman and the three or four kids and to keep herself going? So you've created a, 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 a shit storm for a guy that's impossible to get himself out of. Exactly. And so you're entering into something that's unrealistic from the very beginning. And if you're fucking with Sherry, she's telling you that your money is her money. And her money is hers. She's gonna beat you so too. How in the he- and she's gonna whoop your ass on top of it. So how in the hell can you reconcile being in that relationship? So you're entering into something that's unrealistic and has no chance of succeeding which is what we why marriages fail because of finance. Well, I've been married 31 years, so I did something right. Well, <laughs> it could be it's because he's scared. I'm sorry. But okay. <laughs> but okay. I I I I digress. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to the next subject, y'all. And this one right, sweetie. This one may or may not be a factor for you, but I put this in there. got a lot of background on it. Because it should be. Yeah, somebody's got a TV on or something. Mm-mm, it's an echo from you talking. Okay, so I'm not sure who, who it is. Okay, let's talk about religion, spirituality. You know, not everybody on here is religious. I know one person on here for uh, for certain who is an atheist, is a self-professed atheist, right? Yeah. So for for and I and I'm not calling her out, you know, she owns it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Her. And, I, and I love her. Yeah, D D D is my one auntie. You know, process so, of elimination, huh? You know, it is what it is. <laughs> but I wanted to ask the panel for you guys and what do you think in terms of what a woman brings to the table? How much does her religion or spirituality factor in is that is that a factor? Anybody? I would say I'm, I would say yes. We don't have to be of the same faith, but we do need to both believe in a higher power. So my wife and I, we grew up differently. You know, I grew up in a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, that's my that's my that's my faith. That's what I believe in. But she grew up in a Baptist Baptist church. But we both believe in God. Okay. Which we know his name is Jehovah, and and we both we pray together, and we believe we we both believe that uh, there is a higher power, and, and things just just not, we don't believe in this whole Big Bang theory, you know we um and we believe that everything that we've been able to accomplish and the blessings that we've been you know provided, we didn't do this on our own. So I me personally, like I want to speak for myself, it's important to me that my spouse, somebody I'm considering being with for the rest of my life. Do have some type of faith. Let me ask you a qu- let me ask you a side question on that. How is that? A, how does that matter for you in terms of the value of be- of believing in that in your relationship? What's the value in believing? Because we have children. 
You know, I had children when I entered into the marriage, and then we have okay. a child together. And I, I, I personally uh, don't want my children to grow up uh, not knowing that there is a God. And I think that, you know, when you are religious, um, I think that there's a certain there's a certain set of values that you have. Me personally. And, um, you know, she has that. I have that. And so our children, in turn, we 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 share that with our children. OK, and that may be from my that may be from my upbringing. But see, I, we were, I can only speak for my person. I can only speak for myself. Because right. we were raised in the same household, and I feel totally opposite. You know, I, I could care less. I don't care if you're atheist or, you know, <laughs> what religion you are. You okay. know, because, um, I, you know, I was raised Joe. I don't have a religion now. I guess you could call me non-denominational or whatever. Okay. Uh, if you believe in a higher power, that's cool. But, you know, um, some people say exactly what my brother said because of the kids. I want them to grow up and believing in God and stuff like that. You don't know what your kids going to grow up to, to believe. I mean, I'm a prime example. You know, my parents would love for me to be a certain religion, but like I told them, like, you're not the same religion you were when you grew up, you know? So uh, I think the problem is I met, I meet plenty of women who's like, yeah, I want a church going guy and I want you to go to church with me every Sunday. Right. Some of them, they can't see themselves in a relationship with a guy who's not like that. And right. Hey, you go to church on Sunday by yourself. You could come back and tell me all about it, but I'm just not going to be there with you. And so uh, that's the problem. But that seems to be a problem for a lot of women. I, I'm sorry, so, you guys, but I just I, I, I feel him on that. I, I just really do. Darren, so I'm, so I'm not leaving you out of I'm coming to you as well, Dean. Can I, can, I, uh, can I make a rebuttal? Absolutely. Absolutely. So my little brother, he's special. Okay, <laughs> okay no, 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 no. He's special in a good way. Okay. I'm, I'm not. This is. I'm not being. I'm not trying to. to, to he's very special. Terry. Terry looks at things from a whole different lens. Okay. But what I would say is, uh, the the reason I, I call him special, in a good way. He's intelligent. He, he he tends to look at things from, you know, every angle there's possible. But that comes from our upbringing. Now he got to a certain age where he decided good to point. believe a little differently. Good point. But that comes from our upbringing. Good I mean, point. He right. We came, we came up in the same household. Valid now point. He, you know, that, that's no different than people who raise kids in, in, in church and, uh, Valid you point. know, they come from this very good background. They end up becoming, becoming serial killers. You know, that's no fault of the parents. But they have those values. Valid so. point. Valid point. Valid point. What's going on, Kenny, man? Welcome to the conversation, my brother. What's good, black people? What's yeah, good? I appreciate you joining us coming in late, man. We're talking about women, what they bring to the table. And uh, this thing is is, is is interesting, man. Yeah, and, and, I, I, and, I and so I, I, I'm a, I want to get your views. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. You coming in late. What value do you think that religion or spirituality plays when it comes to what a woman brings to the table? Um, I, religion doesn't play a big part, but her spirit, spirituality does. Because I think re religion is, is, is a a group or a man-made situation where as long as she got a spiritual connection to her higher being, that's all that matters to me. Okay. 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 I can dig that. Bert, come on in here, man. I ain't heard from you in a minute. Yeah. It don't, it don't mean anything to me. I mean, you know, I do believe in, um, in higher power. I mean, I grew up, uh, in the church, Pentecostal, non-denominational Islam. So, you know what I mean? I've been, you, I've been there, done that. But at the end of the okay. day, you know, I do believe in a higher power, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call him or her. Okay. It doesn't, make a, it doesn't make a difference to me. I mean, long as, you know what I mean? If you if you got that base and you know that there is something more than just us. But other okay. than that, I mean, you know, it's not a, it's not no type of a, a, a deal breaker or anything like that. You know what I mean? Because okay. that's a whole other discussion for a whole other day because we can go oh, right. have to raise on this. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what no, I was hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I can go so many questions, but that could be a whole other conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I, I, I want to bring... I'll, and I'll leave off with this. Um, <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'm surprised that a lot of women believe in what they believe in because a lot of religions ain't for them. Mm. Mm. Right. That's a you preaching now, brother. Very good point, Bert. Yeah, it's a D, good point. Yeah. D, get in here with your views, sweetheart. So for you, where do you stand on this topic? <laughs> so I do not believe in, in God or Jesus or whatever. I think it's actually a social construct designed to keep poor people in, in check, basically. And it worked. 
for a number of years. If you think that if you behave here and if you're a good person, no matter how much they step on your neck, and that once you get to heaven, you will get all your glory. Then, I mean, it works. It works. And black people are under that thumb so hard, you know. But saying that, like, as far as religion, my husband is, I grew up in the Baptist church. And I found my own way when I got older. And he grew up in the Baptist church. And, you know, as he dated and talked and he researched a little more, you know, his views are kind of more aligned with mine. Like he grew up in the church. But normally in the black community, when we grew up in the church, it's by force. You don't really have a choice of your religion or what you think or what you believe or whatever. But as I grew older, now my kids go to a Christian school. They learn about Jesus and all that, but I give them the option to think for yourself. Yes, you're taught this, and yes, they say this, but think for yourself. And what do you believe? I don't put anything in their heart. If they want to believe in Jesus, then go for it. But my kids are smart enough that they can think outside the box and say, hey, this don't really make sense. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay. Really so, let's, you know? So, so let's take the kids out of it for a second. Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah. take, no, 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 no. So let's want to take the kids out. For you, for you and, and your husband, for you, it, it hadn't made a difference whatsoever. Any kind of belief in a higher being, any construct of religion doesn't make a difference for you. No, we in our house, it, it's not even talked about. It's not brought up. It's not. Yeah, it's not a factor at all. I got you. I got you. Candice. Uh, I'm, you I'm really old. interested to hear from um, some other couples because, I, you know, we fall back on that. You know, every couple that I know, you know, you know, have issues. You, you, that's just part of it. And one of the things that sometimes get us through is the fact that, you know, of uh, believing that um, God forgives us all. Jesus forgives us all. You know, we, we're, we're, we're all imperfect, you know. And so to Not me, me. That's, that's something. I'm, 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 I'm coming to you. I think that's so for us, you know, that has that has actually in in a lot of in a lot of cases, a lot of uh, throughout the years. I've been married now sixteen years. I think that has been the glue that's kept us together because we can fall back on our faith. We, you know, and I, and I'm not super religious. So Terry's right. We grew up in the same household. Older I've gotten, you know, I'm not just this devout Jehovah's Witness. You know, I have my views. You know, that may not be agree with the organization, but mm -hmm. that's still my faith. But here, regardless, I think that's that honestly for us has kind of kept us together in some in, in a lot of ways. Okay. Well, I was going to go to Candace, uh, so I lost. So we lost her. Um, <laughs> Sherry, you're married. What what does what 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 um value does religion or spirituality play? And your relationship, and and in and, and, and in general, uh, for what women bring to the table. Um, to me, it don't really matter that much. Um, <clears throat> I always tell people, well, see, I'm a, they consider me the worldly one, and I talk to them straight. I do believe in a higher power. I do believe in Jehovah God. My mother's a Jehovah Witness. Okay. And if I had to take a faith, that would be the one for me. But okay. I simply tell my mother that. I'm not ready for that. I'm, I'm, I'm. She say I'm worldly. I tell her, yeah, I love celebrating, you know, birthdays and holidays and all that good stuff. And I always, as you know, us growing up in the same household, I always used to have a problem with. I'm gonna do what I want to do. Let me make my own decisions. And if it, if if it leads me to whatever faith I'm gonna get into, that's how I see it. But as far as in my relationship, it doesn't matter. Whatever okay. you want to be, because as you know, my husband is Jamaican. So he more listened to some Rasta thing. I don't give a damn about no Rasta. Okay. I don't like no motherfucking drag. Okay. So, okay. I mean, I you. So okay. I need to care less if that's what he believes. Okay, fine. You know, okay. What I'm saying? as long as he's taking care of me and making me happy, he's good. Okay. Come on, Uncle Larry. Let me what Tony. Hana, Hana, Hana. I don't know. Tony, yeah. Tony, 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 Tony. Tony. Tony say hello. Hana, 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 get in here. Uh, uh, what value for you in your up. marriage, Sherry? Sherry, Sherry, hold it down. Okay, uh, Hannah, what value does religion or spirituality play in your relationship and in general, of uh, terms of what a woman brings to the table? Anyway, hey, you can see. Hello, people. Have a good day, people. What up, Tone? All right, let's <laughs> 
Respect. All right, now, boy, now. Respect. Respect. And I know where you come from, but I'll talk to you later on. <laughs> okay. Come on, Hannah. Um, so, I'm a little different. You know, I'm a PK. Um, what is that? So, preacher's yeah. kid. Preacher's kid. Oh, preacher's oh. kid. Okay. All right. Um. So I mean, but I had. I'm gonna be honest. I have not been in church in about five years. And growing up, I was church, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack in between. However, when I got divorced, I realized how the church turned against me. Um. Because hey, the- little one. Okay, I'm listening, Anna. <laughs> So, hey, baby. I kind of changed my view about the church. So, and I am like, he used to be heavy in religion too. So, we kind of can relate on that level of how we still believe we have faith. We pray, you know, we know that th- this is not just us. So, we do have a higher power. But as far as the t- traditional church, I'm okay. kinda happy that we're not at the how we used to be in church and everything and this is this and this is that because I realized when you do certain things against the church they come against you like I okay. was sure I was on a choir I was um doing everything and I was set down from everything just from being divorced but okay. if I was still getting abused then yeah you could stay in that marriage but if you leave it oh you have to sit down so I just kind of personally left because I feel as though if you preach all this religion all these years and you do one thing against the woman, they're sit down. The man can do whatever he wants. He's still up there preaching on Sunday and teaching on Sunday. In most cases, now they don't sit anyone down. However, I just I'm happy that we had we both have the faith. But as far as we have to be 100 percent in church and that I, I'm, I'm just in agreement with that. Or as my experience to each okay. his own, but I, I don't really care at this point in life. Whatever you, as long as you're, as long as you believe in something, I don't care if you rub, rub crystals together. It, I give two craps. You can okay. rub crystals. You can stump. You can break, rub sage through the house. It doesn't matter to me at this point. Okay. Um, as long <laughs> as you just believe in something, I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, Candice. I was about to come to her. So, she froze. She froze. I she mean, froze, froze again. Froze. Yeah. Right. Okay, Tasha, close us out for for the panel. Then. So uh, for those that are not okay, my cousin. Yes. Can you Your voice can is like you. underwater. I, I'm, I'm having trouble I'm hearing. You. Yeah, you well, froze. It's like mechanical, yeah, and you froze. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let Tasha go. Come on, come on, Tasha. Okay, uh, what I was going to say was, for me, we do not have to be of the same religion. I was raised sub- Southern Baptist. Oh, amen, amen. All right. But okay. we, you do have to believe in God. You're not going to be in my house with the damn pentagram on my floor and a Ouija board. That's what we're not going to do. You have to believe in God. So um, we're not going to do <laughs> <laughs> Don't can't do that. Not in my house. Mm-hmm. But... I I think it's beautiful, and it's one thing that I do love when I see couples praying together, especially like out in public, because you don't see it a lot. And to be able to share something like that to me is a, for me, is another level of intimacy that you that you share with someone. So I I think it's a beautiful thing. And from and again, for me, we have to believe in God. But you know, if you choose to, you know, pray to Allah. I, I might be all right with that. That's okay. I'll let you pray to Allah, but but nothing else. Nothing else more extreme than that. No. Okay. Can I say what I wanted to say? Because my computer Come on, Candace. Yeah. Come on, Candace. Come so, on, baby. What, what I was saying is, me, me and my cousin Kenny. For those that don't know, he's my he's actually my mother's first cousin. We grew up Kojic, and in the Kojic Kojic religion, you have to be equally yoked. But they tell you to pray for your spouse to right. change and be like whatever. But for me, I, it, I'm open. Um, I know realistically that it, it's a higher power. You, as long as you're spiritual, that's good for me. My husband is Church of Christ, so okay. it's it's a big difference. Whereas my church, we're all about instruments. His church is not. So we, as long as we both believe in God, that's good for me. So that's okay. all I have to say on okay. that. Very interesting mix, and so I, I, I'll I'll share mine as well. I'm also a Jehovah's Witness, uh, inactive Jehovah's Witness. Um, 
my views are somewhat similar to what Terry's is. Because I've been experienced to organize religion on so many different levels, I've seen the hypocrisy in it. And so I've turned more towards more of a spiritual person. Having said that, I believe in the tenets of the Jehovah's Witness faith. Um, from having seriously studied the Bible, uh, been a minister myself, things like that. And so one of the points that Tasha made hit home with me. So for me, when it comes to the value of what a woman brings to the table, I do need some belief in, in a higher power uh, because I think it breeds intimacy, you know? And so now if I'm just kicking it with you, I could kill less what you believe. No matter, right. Like, yeah. like Tasha <laughs> said, you can rub two rocks together because you ain't in my apartment for your views anyway. You know, that's not what you're here for. I don't got a view, but... You know? (laughs) Right, you know what I'm saying? But you're only going to be there from 10 to 3 anyway, so (laughs) we ain't got got time to pray, so shit, you know. (laughs) After that, you know, but if I'm going to get serious with you and in terms of what you bring to the table, whether it's kids or not, I need some sense of value there needs to be some value system in place and, and belief because for me, it breeds some level of intimacy. But in an overall bigger picture, that's just my personal view. I think one of the contributing factors that has uh, made it that 34% why a lot of black women is because of when you just listen to the dais, we've lost identity of self. It, we're all over the place. You know, some of us believe in Jehovah's Witnesses and Allah and Kojic and Baptist and this and and that, and it doesn't matter. And so when you have that level of discord, you know, the Bible does talk about being evenly yoked and what fellowship does light have with darkness? That matters. It, It really does matter because guess what? Once you get past the sex part and you get past the laying down and you're laying in those quiet moments with that person, and now it's about being in, because there's a difference between sex and intimacy. Sex is we can get sex anywhere, but when it's just you and that person, and ain't no TV on, no distractions, and you're talking to that person mind to mind. If there's a vacuum and a void that there is no belief system there, I think there's something that's missing there. I think in the black relationships, and so for me. I think that that's become a major problem because especially with the newer generations, there is no belief system because nothing is being passed down of value in that system. And I think that's really hurt women in a sense. And then quite naturally, let's be honest, men, we're men. If we want the draws, we're going to go along to get along. You know? <laughs> and so we're going to just kind of accept what it is. And so quite naturally, if she got a fat butt and a good smile, I'm not going to lay next to her and tell her, baby, you don't believe what I believe. No, I'm going I'm to go along to get along. You know what I'm saying? So I think these are, stop laughing. These are, are things that happen. Wait a <laughs> and I think that's real. I'm just trying to be honest about it. You know what I'm saying? I have a problem with what you're saying because you're, you're equating religion with value and you know, and somebody being a good person, and that's not the way that it is. I'm a good person, even though I don't believe traditionally in God, like you guys do. And I know a bunch of people that believe in God and are supposed to be good Christians, and they do more shit than anybody. So you cannot equate with religion. So that's why I said for me that I'm more of a I mean, although it should be that way, it's not that way. So that's why I said, D, for me, I'm more of a spiritual person because I stated already what I've seen in organized religion breeds too much hypocrisy. That's exactly why I said that. But I do need that person for me to have a belief in something. There's a, I live my life by a lot of sayings, you know, that you have to stand for something or you fall for, you anything. Fall for anything. So for me, that's what I, that's, that's, that's for me what I need. So now if that works in your relationship, bravo. But I'm saying, I think what's missing in a lot of relationships is that vacuum. It doesn't have to be religion. Religion is an organized system. And I think therein lies the problem because I think a lot of the problems get blamed mm. on God when it's really the interpretation of the Bible. Mm. That's, that's a big part of the problem. Yes. That's, where, that's where religion goes wrong because so much shit gets put on God when really it's the interpretation of it. 
Yes. All of us can read a scripture and walk away thinking something different. Yeah. And so that's part of the problem right there. But what I'm talking about is it's not that you're a bad person because we wouldn't be the best of friends if I thought you was a bad person. I love your heart. I love how you treat me. Because I will say this, you can call yourself whatever you want to, but if it's not making you a better friend, a better lover, a better mother, better father, better son, then you're wasting your time anyway. And by the way, the Bible says that. See, this is the part that oh. people doesn't know. The Bible even <laughs> says that. So, you, you know, still. so if you want to get scripture <laughs> on it, that's the truth. Hey, I always but, go back to the Bible. You can't compete with that. The Bible I'm, says it like that. No, 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 I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't leave with that. But, I, but, but, but here's the reality of it. It does say that. Mm. And so you that's so unavoidable. Right? But I'm not asking. That's just it. it. I'm not asking you to believe in the Bible. Right. But that's why I said if you, you can call yourself whatever you want to. But mm -hmm. if it's not making you a better person for me, that's what I just because that's the thing. I don't get to judge anyway. So, Terry, you're right. I don't lie in judgment of people because mm -hmm. what they call themselves. I don't get to make that call. <clears throat> and you've been knowing me your whole life. No, I agree. I'm so, the same way. I'm for me, judgment. one sin is no bigger than the other. So mm -hmm. some people hate on homosexuality. Well, if I'm going to I'm sorry, but I'm going to use the Bible here. But the Bible equates all sins as evenly. So that man that beats his wife, that cheats on his taxes, he's no better than a homosexual. A sin is a sin is a sin. And so for me, I don't get to judge anyway. So when you close them doors behind you, if you ain't fucking an old person or a child or doing some shit that's illegal, I don't care if you want to stick yourself in a rock and rub it together. Do what you or do. Or an animal. I draw the you know, line there. Hurting animals or something like that. Nasty. You know, so that's my thing. Uh -huh. I think in the in the greater context and you know kind of keeping in line with this conversation, that's why you have that conversation up front. Absolutely. You need to find out what what Absolutely. this person truly value. You know what's important to them because I, I forget who said it earlier. They said that sometimes women want to change men, and the opposite mm -hmm. holds true too. And they oftentimes they oh, they, they they turn a deaf ear mm -hmm. because they said, well, you know, yeah. this, you know, he he or she, you know, that I'll, I'll change that. Jay, and it doesn't Jay, work. That, it doesn't Jay, work. Jay, anyway. Jay, Jay you just transitioned to my last subject. You a perfect transition, man. I knew I liked you for some reason. Mm -hmm. oh, some yeah. reason, man. Well, I just, yeah. you, my, my last subject. It's just not and, us, us dark skin brothers. Huh? I know, we got to stick together, my brother. Uh, Kenny, you in here too. So anyway, Canard, Canard, and Bert, y'all them light skin brothers. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but the she last subject up, is talking about morals. Jay transitioned into it. The last subject for me about in terms of bringing something to the table is where do you guys stand on morals? Because especially in 2021, we in, we in the other age of, 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 of on that grind, make that money by any means necessary. So, Jay, you was going there right there at the end. What about morality? Man, I think morality is probably one of the biggest things. And I think that's probably why the divorce rate is so big nowadays. So it's so great because nowadays there is no morals. And I think that's why you see so many young people like, you know what? I'm not trying to get married because I want to do me. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, who I want to do it with. And in a marriage, it don't work that way unless you got an open relationship. So for me, again, I'm, I'm from a different generation, Generation X. I think we talked about that the other day. Last conversation. Um, and, but to me, my wife, she has to have some type of morals. There are certain things that she just won't do. It's just, you know, there's, there's a line that we're not going to cross when it comes to morality. But, you know, from what I'm seeing out here in these streets nowadays, that's not so much the case. So that's my thoughts. I want to go to a married woman, Candace. Get in here. That wine, that wine got you. It's got you. It's, maybe I'm, hang on. Hang on for another ten minutes. Hang on for another ten minutes. Both of them. Man, listen. Hang on for ten more minutes. Bottle, man. This is crazy. <laughs> come on, Candace. Come on, Candace. Where does morality? What what role does morality play in it for you? Can't, I, we can't hear you. Um, can you hear me? 
Yeah. Can, yeah. yeah. can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. My phone is is acting a mess. Um, <laughs> morality is big for me. Um, it plays a big part. I'm not necessarily religious, but morals and and what's right is what plays a part for me in regards to finding a partner. Not necessarily finances, but how you are in certain situations are what defines how you're going to be with me, especially how you are with your mother and children. So that's all I have to say on that. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say too much because my phone is acting crazy. My connection is crazy. <laughs> okay. I want to go to uh, Kenny. Kenny, where do, talk to us about morality and what role it plays, you know, and what women bring to the table for you. Um, are we just we speaking specifically on a uh, uh, relationship or a jump off? Because you know, no. moral, <laughs> if, it's, if it's a jump off, <laughs> no moral tell us, tell us. ain't no moral in the jump off. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So we we speaking specifically on a relationship, right? You know? Right, because we all agree that if it's a jump um, off, we can kill us. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want you had no morals. Well, well, well. Personally, I, I want, I want, uh, I want her to be. Uh, I really want to know what her background is, as far as family wise, because I think that speaks a lot upon a person's background and what their morals are and how they were brought up. Um, and that, that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to make them a better person because of the background. But it kind of gives you a, 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 a somewhere to start. Um, as long as she's true to herself and and okay. and, and, okay. and 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 is respectable and 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 is in tune with who she is, um, I'm cool with that. And you know, as long as you ain't you ain't hurt nobody, you know, as long as you ain't doing nothing wild. I mean, just be 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 who you are. I think a lot of times we want someone to be who we want them to be rather than them be who they are. So, Absolutely. Whatever, you know, Absolutely. be respectable. So that's 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 my thing. Good point. Good point. Hannah, yes. jump in here, sweetheart. Morality. <laughs> what what role does it play in, in in your marriage in terms of what you bring to the table? Um, I am very big on morals. Um, I'll say this. I feel like a woman should be. I'm going old school. A lady in the streets, and you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you ain't throw your glass. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I'm I'm very big on well, uh, minus one back that thing come up, come on, um, all morals go out the window. <laughs> but um, I'm very big on morals. <laughs> I'm very big on morals, and I feel like a lady should handle herself as a lady. And I see a lot of younger, like I have a niece who I raised since she was two years old, and she just turned twenty one. And I see the things she does now and the things she posts, and I'm like, that's not who, that's not the girl I know. That's not. I'm. I'm. I try to tell her you can't treat. You can't put yourself out there on the social media, right? And expect the different result because basically, they say sex sells, and a lot of women nowadays are selling sex, whether it's just being exposed, whether it's their mouth, like the morals a lot of nowadays have gone out the window and I don't understand why. Like I have a daughter and I want her to have morals and values just for, as herself. And I feel like a lot of this generation is lost when it comes to morals. So I'm very big on it. I especially family morals and family like Kenny said, the family, the background. I come from a background where you should be a lady, you should wear a certain way and I mean, I changed my I'm not wearing stockings and skirts down to my ankles nowadays. Right. However, um, I feel like you still should have some type of etiquette towards yourself as a woman. Thank you. Thank you. Bert, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, moral plays a big role. You know, I feel as though that you should make sure that you, you govern yourself accordingly. Right. That you you know you show respect, and I'm cut from that old cloth. I'm from that I'm from that era where you know when we when we're around on Philly streets and we see guys with nice cars and and wearing good suits and things like that, opening the doors for their lady and doing things like that, taking out the trash, helping out a neighbor, things of that nature. You know, I mean that's that's the cloth I'm cut from. Love it. So that's where that's so moral when morality definitely it plays a big role as far as in a relationship and as far as the person that you want to be with. 
Thank you. Thank you. Sis, I'm coming to you. You know. Principles and morals is everything in a relationship. You know, you have to have it. And I sent her um, nephew, Jay, you said that there's certain things your wife ain't doing. Same here. So that means you ain't getting none at home either. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, Terry, come in here, wait, man. What? Dang, wait a minute, sorry. wait a minute. I just went on my head. Sorry, Jay. Uh, I think she uh, throws a shot. Yeah, you have to be. It's an earlier <laughs> conversation. You threw a little shot in there. You threw a little shot up in there. Yeah, I think morals plays a big thing, you know. Um, whether you're dating or either either you're married, because uh, the last thing I want to hear about, especially if I, you know, uh, I know everybody has a past, but if I meet someone and we end up getting married, I don't want to hear about some story about you five years ago that you was doing something crazy or whatever. So uh, mm -hmm. that plays a big part to me. Kind of like, I hate to throw it out there, but kind of like the Kardashians. There's no way in the world if I was Kanye, you know, that, you know, I know things happen, but like morally to have that for the whole world is just, you know, couldn't be my mm -hmm. woman. So it plays yeah. a big part. Okay. Daricelle. You drinking wine. Daricelle. I think morals for me, it just boils down to respect. I mean, I would never want to do something that I feel like would come back to be disrespectful to my husband later that he would have to hear about. And I want him to do the same thing for me, you know. And uh, the way that a guy treats his mom is a big factor for me. If you disrespecting your mom and calling her out her name, it's like, what you got for me? You know that Absolutely. that is a thing. So Absolutely. I think it down to respect. Absolutely. Tasha. Last um, day. All right. I, you know, I think everybody's pretty much summed it up. I I agree with you in 2021. I think there's more people who are living in the gray area now more than ever. And I think that, that gray area continues to grow. And if we don't put a hold on it, it's just going to get worse. If I'm dating someone, yes, they have to have morals. They have to have values. And um, more specifically, it has to match mine. You can't be from the street and live by the code of the street and be with me. That's two different worlds. No, thank you. And so, you know, who you, who you choose and who you pick is such a reflection on yourself and how you view yourself. So. Absolutely. I'm not even going to close and try, try to close out by saying anything extra. I think you guys summed it up so well. Um, Darcel, I love the point where you said it comes down to respect. You know, respect for yourself, respect for your partner, respect for the relationship. And those are all three separate things, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, those are three separate things. You know, even in my singlehood <laughs> and my views about not being jealous and things like that. Have enough respect for yourself that even if you're going to be out there doing something that I don't know about, protect me by protecting your damn self, mm -hmm. you know? So right. if you know that I'm a, I'm raw dogging you, make that nigga jimmy up so that you don't bring me nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, respect yourself enough that if I'm an articulate, intelligent guy, I know what I bring to the table. Please don't be out there screwing on nigga that every tooth in his head is gold. He ain't got no car. He fucking you in my car. Y'all in the back of a store or some shit. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? And have enough respect for the relationship to not get caught. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a violent man, but you put me out there like, like that, then I really might have to put my hands on you. And then, you know, so that's a whole another situation right there. So it's about respect. You know what I'm saying? Protect the ball out there. So that's where morals come into play. Uh, like you said, Hunter, be as freaky as you want to. Look, I'm 53 years old. I'm limited in what I what I can do and, and bring it. No, no, and I, even behind closed, I'm I'm gonna add to that behind closed doors. Absolutely. So what I was saying is, I can I no longer can't pick nobody up. I'm not gonna hefting your hefty ass up no more. <laughs> so if you need somebody to be hefting you up. Get as freaky as you want to behind closed doors. You know, get your groove on. That's, that's all right. Be respectful. <laughs> <laughs> Have your morals. Keep it out there. I'm okay with that. You know, so <laughs> oh, I'm dead serious. Your dog bro. going crazy. <laughs> I'm dead serious. But anyway, that kind of concludes the conversation. I want to add one last thing to it. That I'm going to come back to the beginning. As you guys saw, this was not about beating up women. 
So when people first heard the topic, what a woman brings to the table, I know it could come across a little bit as disrespectful. It was not that. It was just a really close examination for me of where we are in terms of relationships and why my sisters are having so much trouble finding that elusive relationship because maybe it will cause some people to look in the mirror and say, well, what's missing? What can I do different? What can I do better? We off to a new year, new us. You can't keep doing the same things the same way, expecting different results. So if you want to bring that 34% to get damn near close to the 67%, you've got to do some things different. And so I want to say this. There are some things that ask yourself that you bring to the table because if you only bring in your vagina, you're missing the boat. What you should be looking at is, are you bringing any kind of humility, nurturing, compassion, support? If you listen to the people on this panel, those are the things that matter. That at the end of the day, we don't give a damn about your education, whether you make more money than us, you know, any of those things. What do you bring to the table besides that? So. I'm going to go back to that saying. She said, check your attitude. So guess what? Ask yourself, well, more than my vagina, what's my attitude towards what I'm contributing to the relationship? Because when you do that, your value will rise. I promise you. I promise you. Because if you only rely on your vagina, the market is flooded with pussy. So it's, it's, it almost has not too much value anymore. So you got to bring something more than that to the table, ladies. And I'm going to leave it at that. It's been a fantastic conversation. I thank everybody for their input. And I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Once again, it's been real talk. Loved it. Bye. That's what's up. Peace.